Hey everyone, it is... Hold on, let me check. It is 10.45 p.m. I was supposed to film this an hour ago, but then I realized I don't have any lavender blushes I like and I spent an hour looking for some. I have a lot to film. I have a whole notebook stuff I need to talk about because it's the end of the year and that means I have all these year-end roundups that I just, I just have to make sure I talk about because how else am I gonna get YouTube views? By the way, this has a little fox on it. I got it from notebook therapy. So I made a community post of like stuff that I thought roundup videos I thought people I was like okay what roundup videos do you guys want to hear about because like I honestly have no idea what to make aside from the standard favorites or something and one of the comments was 2020 favorites that I like reacting to my 2020 favorites and I was like okay that's actually a really good idea because I'm all for embarrassing myself in public so I went through and I actually don't have any 2020 favorites because I had literally just started my YouTube channel and I was very very busy so what I did do however was around the middle of this year so I think in June or July I did make a favorites of 2021 so far kind of partway through the year video so I thought I know it's only been six or seven months but I'm gonna react to that because you know what it's gonna be even funnier to see just how fast my mind changes because like I have terrible ADHD so I I was watching it and reading through my product description and I was like oh man oh man this is gonna be an interesting video so let's just start I have a whole list of things to talk about start off with primers the first one is and if I have it I'll like try and get it out the Pat McGrath primer which I I have right here. Yes, still a favorite. Not a winter primer. I don't really use it much during the winter, but definitely my summer primer. I've actually already gone through a bottle. This is my second bottle. Takes me a while to go through primers, so that's how you know I like it. The next primer that I wrote down was the Dominate Cosmetics and JD Weighty primer, which is right here, and I am about three quarters of the way through this tube because I'm trying to like I'm trying to conserve it. I don't know why, but like I just I I'm not gonna be able to get it again. Yes, absolutely still a favorite. I will be heartbroken when I can't get it when I run out. I don't I still do not have a single primer. I can't think of any to try that would even come near replicating the effect this gives. If anybody, if anybody has ever found something similar to this, please send it to me. I don't care how much it costs, I'll buy it because this is so so good and I I will be I will I will cry when I run out of this. I will. So yes, still a favorite. Next, I said the Laneige glowy makeup serum and the reason I said that was because this is currently the closest thing I have to the Dominique primer. Yes, definitely still a favorite if only just because I have yet to find something closer to the Dominique primer than this. However, this is still not as hydrating so I have to use way more of this than the Dominique one which is fine because I mean, you know, it has a lot of product, hefty bottle and it's, you know, it's, it's expensive but it's Laneige, it's really not too bad so yes, I still do really like this. Next, I said the Jaclyn under eye primer which is right here and at this point I think I'm about halfway through with this which is a shame because this is expensive so I am I do want to try alternatives in 2022 but in the meantime yes this is absolutely still a favorite I think I've used if I didn't use it in the video it's because I forgot because I kind of have it like over here and I just rearranged everything so I like sometimes forget because I put it in a different spot but yes absolutely I love this my concealer just hits different if I wear this night and day difference next foundation I wrote down the Suku Cream Foundation, which I keep on my desk because I need to use it more. I don't use it often enough and I'm ashamed of myself. This is very expensive. This is discontinued now. They reformulated it, like renewed it. In, in Asia, when they reformulate something, they generally call it a product renewal and it is a in a black packaging now. So if you guys want it, you can't get this specific one anymore, but I have heard the black one is good. It's just not quite as absurdly glowy as this, which is why I like this one so much. So still a favorite, need to use this more. I do plan on using this more in 2022. I next wrote the Sowasu cushion, which I am gonna hold my invisible cushion here because I actually cannot get this anymore. It's gone. I've looked everywhere. I'm not even kidding. I've looked everywhere. I can't find it. I can't even find a renewal. If there is a renewal, it is not accessible to me. So sadly, I cannot repurchase it anymore, but it was totally a favorite. I used it all the way till the very end. I loved it and I'm gonna miss it. Yeah, I, 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 I really just, I really loved it. Can't really use any other cushion anymore these days because that one just hit different. So yeah, I liked it. It was good. Next, I wrote the Pat McGrath Sublime Foundation. I do really like this. However, this is definitely not something I use during the winter. So favorite, not right now, but I used this a lot this past summer, which is why I had it in that summer video. And I suspect once it hits spring, summer, I'll be using this a lot more. Now I will say, I don't know if mine's going bad or not. I feel like I shake it and it still comes out separated, but when I put it on my face, it still looks the same and it doesn't smell bad or anything. So we'll see how it's working next year, but I definitely really liked it during the summer, but I would not consider this a really good winter foundation because 
because my skin is very dry during the winter. Like, really, really dry. That was it for foundations. Now, if you guys want to know what quote-unquote replaced these, then definitely keep an eye out. I have a video of my 2021 most used favorites coming and I will be filming that as soon as I can. I'm not going to film it with the same look because that's just going to make me look... That's, you know, that I feel like that's kind of silly, not very professional. I'll, I'll, I'll film a different look and then I'll film that video. Uh, that You'll get to hear my favorites then. So this is just me talking about whether something's my favorite or not. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys. Uh-huh, you'll have to watch two videos. Oh no. So I'm moving on to concealers. So the next one I have is the Pat McGrath concealer. No, this is not a favorite anymore. I actually am seriously considering parting ways with it next year. I did use a fairly significant amount, but um, this is super, super heat proof. I have worn this in blistering humidity in the summer when it was like 95 and I was waiting in line for the Hello Kitty Cafe truck. I mean, it was hot and this definitely doesn't budge. But at the same time, I just feel like I don't know if I'm gonna use this very much next summer. If I don't use it very much next summer, I am just gonna go ahead and bin it. So yeah, not really a favorite anymore. And then I said the JX Professional Triple Concealer. Um, I think you guys can guess. Absolutely. I've still been using this very consistently. Uh, I've made a very significant dent in the one color that I do use. I feel like it may be starting to dry out a little bit and I have some alternatives I'm trying out that I will be reporting on later once I've used them more and I also do have the cream foundation from the same brand on its way to me. Absolutely still a favorite. I'm gonna use it until it's too dry for me to use anymore. I have used it in basically every video I've ever put out. Whether I did three looks one palette or whether I did a full get ready with me, I always, really always have just used this. And just kind of as an honorable mention, I mentioned in that video the Clinique concealer brush. Absolutely. If I'm using cream concealer, I'm using this brush. I do want to try other concealer brushes next year. I thought about getting the ABH concealer brush when it was on sale, but then I just kept forgetting. Like I just, my life got the better of me and I never ever finished adding to cart or purchasing and it's not on sale anymore. So maybe I'll buy it, maybe I won't, we'll see. That is my ultimate concealer brush right now. So then I wrote the D'Alba setting spray. Yes, right here. Yes, I actually have a backup of this and I am about, I would say it feels like I'm about down to here on this now, which goes to show you how much I use this. I use this very liberally, particularly during the winter. I don't think it has the same setting power as All Nighter, but it comes really close with all the hydration. If I'm having a bad foundation day where my foundation is very dry, very heavy, or I use the wrong powder and I just dried out my skin, this really can rescue it and make my complexion look like I used really nice products. So absolutely still a favorite and I think I, I don't foresee myself really finding a replacement for this. Next, I wrote the Urban Decay All Nighter, which I actually don't have anymore. I got rid of it, so invisible all nighter right here. I am testing the All Nighter Glow, but no opinions on it yet. Um, that used to be a favorite because I traveled a lot more back then, and I just simply don't. And if I'm traveling, like I went to Hawaii, that definitely locks it in. I was in Nanning, China. I was in Guilin, China during the summer, and absolutely I used All Nighter to set my makeup, but I haven't traveled, so I just didn't need it anymore and so I did go ahead and I parted ways with it and if I ever am traveling again I will just rebuy the mini I mean it's you know or if I like the all-nighter glow then I'll just bring that but yeah I basically only use the Dialba one at this point so I just saw no need to hold on to it anymore I also wrote down the Too Faced Hangover setting spray and that did used to be the one I used on the daily much more often but again it's been dethroned I literally only used the Dialba one I'm not even kidding I don't know why I said this I said the Dominique ultra high hydrating mist. I think the reason I said this was because the primer was so good that I just kind of fooled myself into thinking this was just as good. This is not a setting spray. This actually removes my makeup, or at least some sometimes. Like, some of my makeup products this will sit well with other makeup products. It just straight up takes off, so. Uh, this is an excellent primer spray but it is by no means my favorite. I don't really use this as often as I thought I would. I'm still gonna hold on to it, especially because you can't get it anymore, and you know, it's nice, but um, no, not a favorite, and I don't actually even consider this a setting spray. All right, now we're moving on to powders. So the first powder I wrote down was the Shiseido Loose Powder, which I have right here. This is actually one of the first powders I ever bought. I got this on Reddit, so I got it for like 20 bucks. Yes! Still a favorite. This doesn't dry out my skin, so I use this during the winter. It's one of the few loose powders I can use during the winter. It looks absolutely beautiful, has a very radiant finish. It's very slightly pink, so I feel like it kind of sort of corrects my sallow yellow undertones. So yeah, I still love it. And it comes with like an absolute truckload of products, so like I'll never run out. Next, I said the Nakia Joy Loose Setting Powder. Yes, 
I think I've ranted about how good this is in at least one video towards the tail end of this year. This is so, so good. My winter this year in North Carolina cannot decide if it wants to be blistering humid summer or freezing cold actual winter. So I have actually used this a lot more than I thought I would. I do want to get the pressed one gonna definitely put it on my 2022 bucket list of things to buy just didn't happen this year so yes this is sorcery in a jar i don't see how she was able to do this i have dry skin she has oily skin and yet i love it so much absolutely amazing and for those who don't like scent she does have this loose powder in an unscented version now so definitely there is something for everyone for this product. Next, I wrote the Jaclyn Mood Light Loose Powder, which is right here. This is the old packaging. It is now in like that weird square packaging. This is like the holiday packaging before she like made it part of her permanent collection. Yes, still a favorite. Love this. Definitely during the winter imparts a really beautiful glow on my face. This is definitely way superior to the Hourglass Infinity Powder. So yeah, love this. And I don't actually have very much left. <laughs> and then I wrote the Jaclyn Under Eye Loose powder in brightening lilac which i have here in the square packaging yes and no definitely a summer go-to for me but in the winter usage of this drops completely off the cliff so i haven't used it in a very long time but during the summer i do very much like this however i don't know if i could consider it a favorite since i haven't used it in so long just due to the change in season still like it but i don't know if i consider it a favorite like right now i feel like my lash is about to pop off oh no all right i i have a lot of powders on this list i guess i just i don't know i'm a powder aficionado kogendo brightening moisture powder yes absolutely i love this this is just this is amazing and i really want to get it in the other color eventually whenever the month whenever i have the spare change yes yes this is amazing the brush it comes with is garbage i've since long since lost it but the powder itself this is my ultimate go-to winter all over face powder and then i wrote the eclipse blur powder pack i have actually since decluttered it it is an excellent powder it gives the perfect marshmallow skin finish but i feel like i just kind of had outgrown it in my collection i would say for those looking for a smooth mattifying powder that makes your pores disappear and that is affordable this powder is absolutely the thing to use but um i just kind of felt like i'd outgrown it if that makes any sense i feel like i have better options now in my collection it just didn't have a place anymore so i don't have it so no it's not a favorite but that doesn't detract from the fact that it's still an amazing product and I would thoroughly recommend it. Next, I wrote the Shantikai Perfect Blur, which is right here. I do have the hummingbird packaging. It is permanent now. And there is also a flower packaging of this as well. Yes, this is absolutely a favorite. I use this mostly off camera actually, but it is really good. I feel like this is kind of like the more luxurious version of the blur powder pack, which is kind of why I didn't keep Eclipse because I was like, well, I have this. I'm just going to be using this. And then I also wrote down the Becca Light Shifter Finishing Veil, which I have here in the shade one scattering this feels to me like a cheaper dupe of the Shantikai powder but as becca's not around and you can't get it anymore i can't really consider it a dupe since nobody can buy it anymore this is really good however i had found as i had found after using this several times it sometimes can darken my foundation and make it weirdly yellow so if i use it to set only my under eyes you can kind of see a line of demarcation where i used it so i haven't been using it lately it feels kind of finicky whereas my perfect blur powder which does the exact same thing doesn't darken my foundation so i wouldn't consider that a favorite anymore the next one is going to be the westman atelier biscuit is this still a favorite? Yes, it is. I oftentimes will just go straight into powder and then I forget. And then I forget. So my cream powders in general could all use some more use. So I'm definitely gonna try and make it a thing in 2022 to remember to use my cream products more often. But when I do remember, love using this. This is really great. I think the undertones of this are perfect. It's not super, super gray, but it's also not warm. It just lies perfect in that neutral with a drop of, with like a drop of red in it. Just like the littlest bit, it's like 1% red. And that makes it really great. It's especially for olive undertones. So yes, I do still really like this and I do plan on keeping it and continuing to use it. Next, I wrote down the Huda Tantor and I have it right here. And I actually don't know how much longer I plan on holding on to this for. I used to use this a lot more often, but it has since been forgotten about. So I'm gonna make it a point. Like I said, I wanna use my cream products more often, but ever since discovering Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm and Westman Atelier uh, Biscuit and even M Cosmetics So Soft, I don't know how much longer this will stick around for. In fact, I have already decluttered my Chanel Tan de Chanel 
because the undertones for that are just really I just came to realize those undertones ain't for me and this might be following suit soon just because I just don't use it anymore uh don't know what happened but it has not really been a favorite ever since that video and then next I wrote Glossier Cloud Paints now I used to really like these and either I was too much of a novice to notice or something changed with my skin but using them now they eat my foundation so I have actually actually since sold every single last one of them. I don't have them anymore and I won't be buying them again unless they come out with like a lavender one in which case just because it's lavender I might buy it and then it'll eat my foundation and I'll be mad at myself so I don't have those anymore. Um, I don't know. I still think they're great. It just seems me and liquid blushes just really don't get along. I feel like all of them always eat my foundation. It is so tough for me to find a liquid or super emollient cream blush that works for me. I have gone through, I have bought and sold so many at this point. So yeah, that's what happened with those. And then next I wrote my 3CE Velvet Liquid Blush, which I do still have, but I hardly use it because I just forget I have it. And I definitely want to make a point to use it more often because it is a matte liquid blush. So it doesn't eat my foundation. It lays really well on the skin, looks amazing and it is definitely not a good thing that I haven't used this more often. So I definitely want to kind of put this on the short list of things to use more next year. And next I wrote Clinique Cheek Pops, for which I have a pretty exhaustive collection of at this point. I This is one of the few products where I was like, I have to have almost every single shade. So I have almost every single shade. Yes, absolutely still a favorite. Love using these. Absolutely adore the Cheek Pop formula. I even just recently hauled the Cheek Pop Pearl formulas during their 30% off sale. They just came in the mail, so I'm so so excited to use these. I got three shades total. The other ones I didn't think I would like. So I just got the three that I thought I would like. I am just ready to go, ready to try them. I feel like this is the one formula. It's like the sweatpants of my life. The one blush that will never let me down. It will never look bad. I will always love Cheek Pop, I feel like. I don't think I will ever not like Cheek Pops. If they ever make new shades, like when they made some shades that were Asia exclusive, I paid the amount of money it took to buy it on an international reseller website. I think I got them off Beauty Box Korea. I probably paid like 40 bucks just for that one shade. Like I was, I, this is not a joke. I love Cheek Pop that much. And then next I said Romand Better Than Cheek which I need to use these more often. They're just so tiny. They're easy for my eyes to pass over and then I don't even see them. So, and, and my blush collection at this point is shamefully extensive. So I definitely wanna make a point to use these because these are the ultimate definition of matte blush. And not only are they matte, they have blurring properties. So they not only go on really well, but they will blur your pores, almost as if you're putting on a setting powder in a blush. These are just insane. So I definitely wanna get more shades and use them more often in 2022. They just, you see how tiny the packaging is. I feel like it's so easy for me to just even forget they're there, um, which is actually the reason why I ended up decluttering and selling all of my Chantecai little tiny blushes because they were so small, I literally never used them. So finally I was just like, this has just gotten to the point where it's ridiculous. So I did sell those. So yeah, I definitely am reevaluating how I store my makeup. I wanna improve how I store things so that I can see everything so that my eyes don't pass over things. Um, given that I have, you know, my, I have really bad ADHD, how I store and display my makeup items can very much affect what I use. So if I want to make sure I use something more often, it's not just a matter of, oh, just remember it more often. That's, it's really hard for me to do that. So I definitely need to reevaluate and make the proper accommodations of my makeup storage and organization such that I feel like it'll cater to me more. Definitely a 2022 goal for me. I have a lot of blush. Oh my God, I wrote down so many blushes, which I guess that makes sense. Blush is like my favorite thing. Okay, let's see. Let me go to scroll down. Okay, the Sam single blushes. Yes and no. Um, I only have the more um, bright colors, so I don't use these very often, but when I do need that color, these come through for me. Like I need a yellow blush, this comes through. I need the orange blush, this comes through. So yes, they're my favorites because these are the only blushes I actually have in these colors. So I know if I need them, they're right there for me. But no in the sense that because they're so situational, I don't use them that often. However, I do still love these. You can get these for as low as 250 depending on where you shop. It, these are so good. Like if you are on a tight budget, but you want to have as many blush colors as possible, just buy a truckload of the Sam single blushers and you will not regret it. Next, I wrote down the M powder blushes. So these would be the um, baked ones. So for example, here is, here is magic hour. Yes and no. I'm not currently on the glowy blush kick. I feel like these are so glowy for me right now that it almost feels like I'm putting on a highlighter. So I'm not really onto these right now. I kind of have phases where I really like it and I really don't. So I would say not a favorite right now just because I'm kind of on a 
more of a matte or sheeny blush kick, but I think I definitely will eventually return back to these and use these more often. I find I really gravitate towards these in the summer, so I still do really like them, and in fact, I just got Venetian Rose, so absolutely a favorite, just not right now. And then I wrote the Patrick Ta Powder Blush, of which I still only have one shade because I just haven't had the spare coin to go back and get the rest, but they're on my loves list. Yes, I still do really like this, but I haven't really wanted to use this color in a while, so I do really want to get the other colors. I think when they have their spring 20% off sale, I'll finally be able to finish off my collection, but um, yeah, I definitely really, really enjoyed using this. I wore the P completely down, but um, not right now, so I would guess I could say no, but it's still in my collection, so obviously I like it enough to keep it in my collection. I think it's great though. Like it. I like the formula. I know they're like kind of some people really like them, some people think they're not worth the price, but I don't know, something about them's really pretty for me. It must be because I do like more sheer buildable blushes that I like them a lot. If they're too pigmented, it actually kind of like, I can't really work with them very well. Lastly, I wrote the Moira Ombre blushes. I think the only reason I said these were my favorites midway through the year was because when I was getting them, they were so like just, ooh, look shiny, gradient, ombre, pretty, and they just totally caught my ooh shiny part of my brain, and so I was using these nonstop for a little bit because they just were so beautiful, and they are still, they're, they're really pretty for me to look at. However, I haven't used these in a very, very long time. Um, I definitely wouldn't really call them favorites anymore. In terms of formula, I think they are fine. I don't think there's anything special about them, and I don't think there's anything bad about them. They are just really, really standard matte blushes. They feel like just a generic drugstore matte blush, which they definitely are priced that way, but for me, you know, having all these other blushes in my collection that are higher priced or with more kind of niche finishes, I just kind of end up not really having any reason to use these aside from just wanting to look at the pretty packaging. So haven't used them in a while. I still really like them though, so I still do hold on to them. They, for some reason, they really just remind me of my dad and his art. I think that's the biggest reason I hold on to them. So anything that reminds me of my dad and his art, I tend to get really attached to regardless of whether I use it or not. But yeah, I haven't used them in a while. Okay. We're finally done with blushes, except for face palettes, which I'm gonna cover separately. Good grief, that took a while. Okay, let's move on to highlighters. So the very first thing that I said in that video, yes, these are absolutely still favorites, but rest in peace, my Becca highlighters. I do actually have almost all the shades basket here and I keep them right on my counter where I can reach them all easily because I love them so, so much. They are absolutely still favorites, particularly golden mint I've been using a lot lately. Who knows why? I love them and when I heard that the site was closing and somebody found an Octoly code that got you 30% off, I definitely went and bought literally every single shade that I thought I would want and I, at first I thought, oh, I'm such an idiot for doing that, but now that I have them, I am so glad that I did that because I love these. I miss Becca, totally still favorites. And then I wrote down Cleo Prism Air, which I only have one shade. So I, ke I kept gold sheer here. <laughs> yes, this is still a favorite. I think you have seen by now in multiple Get Ready With Me's where if I'm using a highlighter on my blush that is too dark to use on my nose, I'm just like, oh, I'll just use this on my nose. This is just an amazing highlighter. It goes with any look, any look it will go well with. So if I don't know what highlighter to use, I can just use this, it goes beautifully. It has a baked formula. And in fact, I just made a Yes Style purchase where I got the Prism Highlighter Duos. I got both shades because um, I realized I hadn't written a single Yes Style review on products I had bought since 2018. And you get Yes Style points for writing reviews, like 50 to 100 per product. So by the time I got caught up, I had enough Yes Style points that I was able to make a purchase of $75 for free because I just had that much credit from my Yes Style points. So just pro tip for you guys, if you order from Yes Style a lot, review what you get and get those Yes Style points because 100 Yes Style points gets you a buck off your order and that can add up really fast. So those are on the way to me, could not be more excited. Next, I wrote the ColourPop Super Shock highlighters, which mostly I probably was just referring to Flexitarian, which I feel like a lot of people have talked about and I have not used these recently, so not a favorite, but I still really like them. So obviously I still hold on to them. You know, I must like them to hold on to them, but that being said, I only held on to the Biddy highlighters because it's Biddy, so it's Pony, so I just held on to it because I really like Pony. So the only ColourPop highlighter I really held on to because I like it is Flexitarian, and I don't really use it anymore, so yeah. Now, if we're talking about the Super Shock highlighters in the big formula, yes, these are still favorites of mine, and yes, I am still mad. I don't have all the shades of these. I will die mad about it because so far, there's no hint that they will ever come back. So yes, I'm mad. You will put me in the casket 
and my corpse will make a middle finger at ColourPop for never bringing them back. But Flexitarian, I haven't really used. Like, no, I will go full Karen on ColourPop, wondering where the heck Super Shock highlighters and the big pans are. Where are they? I want them. Oh my gosh. I just, I'm mad. I'm mad. Now we're moving on to face palettes, starting with highlighter palettes. The first thing I wrote was the Jaclyn highlighter palette. Is this still a favorite? Yes, actually. Yes, this totally is. You can't get most of these as singles now, but the palette itself you'll never be able to get. It's sold out. I am definitely really glad I own this and I have no plans on passing it on. That being said, I have discovered so many wonderful, fabulous, fun, hilarious highlighters I've been really enjoying that I haven't used used this as often recently, but I definitely had a kick where I literally was only using this and I probably will have that kick again. And if I'm ever traveling, this will come with me. It's, it's really great. I definitely really like this still. Next, I wrote the Dior Highlighter Quad. You can't actually get this anymore. And in fact, Morgan Turner just talked about this. Still a favorite, absolutely. There are some shades in here that just I still don't have in my collection anywhere else. The gold and the, the gold in particular is a gold highlighter that doesn't look too dark on me. So this is kind of like trophy wife for my skin tone, which I absolutely appreciate. This is a beautiful quad and because it has a clear top, I reach for it a lot. And next, I wrote the Menagerie. I wrote the Menagerie Arthurine blush palette. Is this still a favorite? Actually, it is not and I am actually putting this on my cell block. I will be selling this. I have come to realize as I have used it more that I cannot do pigmented blushes. I actually have one of the shades on my face today. I have the shade Blueberry on and it, I couldn't blend it out. I had to use a different blush. I used one of the Peripera blushes to try and diffuse it and lighten it so it looks more manageable now, but when I first put it on, I couldn't blend it out. And I have come to realize that having dry skin, because I really like having dewier foundations and I don't ever fully set them so I don't dry out my skin, this really sticks to it and I cannot blend it out. So it's just, it's not going to see much use from me. I just can't, I cannot get along with this formula. I am not really into dark blushes anymore. I used to really like it, but I've come to realize it doesn't look good on me. I need to stop wearing blushes not meant for my skin tone. So I actually am going to be passing this along. I will not be using it anymore. And yeah, I just, I think I am probably just going to stick with mostly Korean formulas from now on. I feel like I agree with those a lot better. I just can't control a pigmented blush very well unless it can blend out really well even on skin that is still slightly tacky and this just can't do it for me. It is a beautiful blush palette and I'm so sad to see it go. I almost wanted to hold on to it just to have it because it's menagerie, but I know somebody else will love it so much more than me. Benefit Cookie, AKA the entire Cheek Leaders palette that I bought just for Cookie because at the time Cookie was not a single and Jacqueline sold out the trio. Don't come for me. L like. Back in the day of Cookie first coming out, Cookie wasn't a single. Cookie was not a single. Cookie and Tickle both were not made into singles until like I'm not, I think over a year later. So don't come after me. So yes, I do have the face palette cookies right here. At the time that I bought this, Cookie was one of the only highlighters I owned, so I used it very generously. I made a nice hefty dip right there, but I haven't used it recently. I feel like I just have so many other fun highlighters in my collection that I just want to keep using all those highlighters that I don't really dig into this palette very much. Um, I can't use Hula Caramel. It's too orange. I cannot gold rush. I can't even get this on the brush. What the hell is this? This doesn't even come off on the brush, let alone show up on my face. This is fine, but I have better coral blushes. Um, Hula, Hula Light are fine, but you know, I have lots of bronzers these days, so I really just don't use this as much as I used to. At the time that I bought this, this was basically the only face palette I owned, so it got a lot of use then. I still hold on to it, mostly just for nostalgia's sake, because it's one of the first makeup products I really owned. So I still hold on to it, and I do honestly really like Cookie, but not a favorite anymore. I have a lot of other fun stuff I play with. I feel like this is, like, boring. It's boring, and it definitely, when you open this palette and look at it, you definitely can kind of feel the datedness of it. Kind of feel feels a little bit out of trend, out of date. Uh, not to say it's bad or anything, but, and you know, and considering that I really only bought this for Cookie. So yeah, not really a favorite, wah wah. Next I wrote eyebrows. Okay, I wrote down brow blade, which I have right here. Yes, still a favorite. However, I'm probably not gonna be buying it anymore unless it goes half off because I feel like I have found a better pen that I will be talking about in my most used makeup of 2021. So yeah, I still do like it though. I am going, I have I have gone through like three of these at this point. I will go through this one. I like it, it's nice. I also said M Cosmetics Brow Cream, which is right here. If you've been watching any of my videos this year, you will see something has been conspicuously missing and that has been any and all brow creams and brow waxes. I have not used any this year. And and you know what? I don't notice anything missing in my brows not using these. 
And you want to know why I initially stopped? Because I had a really serious bout of depression and IBS and I didn't have the energy to do it. But you know what? I never ever restarted using it because A, I'm still really, really tired. But B, I didn't really feel like my brows lack for anything not using this. Now, am I interested in getting back into brow wax? Yes, I am. I kind of want to try like the brow freeze or something, maybe if it goes on sale. I actually have been seriously contemplating getting the got to be spiking glue that everyone uses. It's definitely something I'm thinking about, but not until I know for a fact that I'll have the energy and want to actually put in that time. Because right now I am lazy. I just use brow pencil and brow pen. But you know what? I think it looks pretty good that way. I do really want to try to get some like Korean brow gels. I kind of wonder if those might be good, but yeah, I'm not ragging on this by the way. This is still, I think, one of the best, best brow gels I've ever tried. It really does an admirable job holding up my stubborn Asian brow, so absolutely I recommend this, but I myself, it just did something that fell out of my routine. It's a step I didn't have the energy to do, and then by the time I thought about bringing it back, I didn't miss it. So not a favorite anymore. Somehow it's not dried out yet. I used it, I used it last weekend, still not dry. <laughs> so that speaks to the longev longevity of this. So if you got it, you'd love it. Next, I wrote the Natasha Denona Glam Eyeshadow Palette. This was in the eyebrow category. So if I mentioned it before, but there's a very specific shade in the glam palette that is my perfect eyebrow color. So for a while I was using that a lot. I made a pretty significant dent in the eyeshadow, which is really funny, but I haven't used it recently. Uh, I've just been using my pencils. I had a really large stockpile of pencils that I got when they were half off and I just kind of ran through them all this year. They did not go half off at all this year. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do when I run out, <laughs> but yeah, I haven't used it this year. haven't used it ever since then just because I had so many pencils. So I guess I could say not a favorite. I've not really been into powders for my eyebrows lately. All right, so now we're gonna move on to liners. And the only real thing I have to note would be the Clio So Sharp So Simple liners. Absolutely still love these. Um, still not dry yet, which is kind of a miracle. Definitely still the best waterline pencils. I tried the Too Faced Killer liners. These don't hold a candle and at full price, they're way more expensive. So, nope, I do really want to try the Patrick Ta ones. I do really want to try some other ones. But in the meantime, the Cleo So Sharp So Simple, super reliable, absolutely still a favorite, and I still can recommend them. And then I wrote the, for mascara, I wrote the Peri Para Ink Black Cara in volume, which is right here. This is actually dried out, so this is going in the garbage. Um, I haven't used it for a very long time now because I got a lash lift, which meant I didn't have to use this anymore. But without a lash lift, this absolutely is my holy grail waterproof mascara for wimpy, short, straight, stubborn Asian lashes. You know the whole deal. Besides the Kiss Me Heroin Make Volume and Curl, which is my other holy grail, this is absolutely amazing if you want punchy volume. And it is far easier to remove than the Etude House Lash Perm Curl Fix. Now, of course, it's waterproof. It's hard to remove, which just means the Lash Perm Curl Fix, oh my god, that stuff is impossible to take off, so I cannot use it. But yes, um, if I didn't have a lash lift, would still be using this religiously. I just have not needed to, and I honestly don't think I'll ever not have a lash lift ever again because um, I found a place that does it for a pretty good price for where I live, and I only get it done once every two to three months, so for me, it's worth it. All right, so we're moving on to lips. So the first thing I wrote was the M Cosmetics Soft Blur Lip Liners. No, not a favorite anymore because they're so freaking darn expensive and I found better options that are cheaper. Not gonna repurchase Soft Blur anymore just because I feel like I have found better options. Uh, Jaclyn lip liners seem to be frequently going on sale for $10 or less, so definitely a great purchase at that. And at full price, they're the same price as M Cosmetics, but I feel like Blondie and Cupcake are even better than Fawn. Um, I'm kind of spoiling my 2021 video, but I just want to quickly mention why I don't use Soft Blur Velvet Lip Liner because I used to really go on about those. I just have since found better options. Next is the, oh my gosh, I like wrote everything everywhere. Benabalm, I said I use Benabalm a lot. I still have it, it is still right here. However, it is discontinued and so you can't get it anymore. And on top of that, the lip balm of choice for me so far this year has been Sugar Rose from Fresh right here. I really love these. They had a buy one, get one free. So I have two shades, but I use this one way more. I find this one to be even juicier. So yeah, again, spoiling a little bit, but yeah. I don't know, I just, I find the formula to be outdated. It's kind of like with Korean lip tints, you can kind of tell when the lip tint came out by the formula and obviously they get a lot better. And some of the oldest lip tints on the market that are still being sold, like some of the old Etude House ones, they suck now. Back in the day, we all thought they were great, but they suck now. It's kind of the same thing with Benabalm. Not that Benabalm sucks, but it's just very easy to kind of see the evolution of our tinted lip balm formulas on the market as time has gone by when you compare Benabalm to other options. So that's that, and then, Moving on, I said the ink matte blur tints, which is right here. 
I actually am slowly in the process of kind of trimming down my collection of these. I don't use these anymore. I haven't used these in a very long time. I used to go on and on about these, but I just don't use them anymore. I feel like I have found better options. However, these are, these are really, really good. So I do want to try to use them more often, but I just have so many funner, shinier things I'm using right now. So I haven't used these. So I still think these are great. I still think you guys would love them if you pick them up and the colors for Pear Pear are always really fun. Yeah, I just haven't used them. Uh, you'll see in my 2021 video what I've been up to in that department. And then I wrote the Peri Pera Tints and the, so the Ink Tint Serum and the Ink Stick Serum, which are kind of like sister products. Just one's a stick, one's a serum. Love the packaging for these both. I don't know what about them. They're really pretty, particularly the stick serum. These are really great on off days. They are not thick and balmy, but they're still shiny. They just have such a pretty unique finish. I actually just picked up a couple more shades. This I still really like, but it's kind of, um, Korea just like became obsessed with watery, dewy tints this past year, like end of 2020 towards 2021. It's like been an explosion of watery tints, uh, in just vastly superior formulas. I feel like they, I don't know, the Korean market just went crazy. Like I just felt like everywhere I looked, somebody was making a watery tint. So I just have so many fun options to pick from now, which I'll talk about later. So I don't use these as often as I used to, but I still do like these and I still do recommend them. Just not, just haven't, you know, I've just been using other things lately. And then, okay, let's move on to Romand Juicy Lasting Glasting Water and Zero Velvet Tints and See-Through Matte Tints. Yes love these. I love every single one that I own. Oh my gosh, I have. In fact, I have expanded my collection. I have almost every single shade they have ever released, which is ridiculous, but I actually use like all of them. So you can't even come after me. I love these all so much. My goodness, these are so good. I have one of each formula to present here. So zero velvet, juicy lasting, lasting water, and see-through matte, which I only have the Hanbok collection. Still favorites, need I say more. My collection is like 85% Romand right now. I just love these. Um, they've come out with some new stuff that I will talk about later. I will continue to keep Romand on my radar. I will continue to want to buy literally everything they come out with in the lip department. I will continue to love these so, so much. These are just amazing. Can't say enough good things about the Romand lip products. And at this point, they have so many colors and finishes. You are bound to find something you like. So yes still favorites, absolutely. Then I wrote Kaja Gloss Stick and M Cosmetics Lip Cushions. And I kind of put them in the same entry because they honestly are very, very similar. I don't use these. I haven't used these in a very long time, mostly because I wear masks when I'm out. And these are that thick, glossy, they're a very thick, very glossy, very balmy stick and gloss and a stick kind of formula that I love. These, of course, they smudge like crazy under a mask. So I've had very little reason to use these. However, of course, I'm still holding on to them because I love them. I just because I, I just don't really have a reason to wear these unless, um, because you know, they just make all my masks a mess. That's really the only reason I haven't used these. It's just because of that. It's not the problem with the formula. It's just the problem with the current times, but um, I still love these though. So I do plan on getting more shades whenever I start wearing these out again, but in the meantime, they have just kind of been in hibernation. And then I wrote the Dior Lip Oil, which I have a couple, I have three shades here. Yes, I do still really like them. Uh, again, these smudge like crazy under a mask, so I haven't used them very often. I mostly just wear them around the house as a balm, um, but then they like get on my water bottle, so I just haven't used them very often, but I still do really love them. There were some limited edition shades that came out that I never realized they came out, and of course I miss them and I can't get them ever again, and I'm so mad, but I do very much enjoy what I have. I particularly like rosewood a lot, so yeah, I think these are lovely. I went to Sephora a couple days ago, and I looked in the aisle that had the lip glow oils, and I kid you not, they had the samples and then the entire shelf was empty. I was heartbroken, but I guess I'm glad they're doing so well. I hope they come back. Unleashia Tint, these two right here. Yes, love these. I wish I could have gotten all the shades, but at this point, some of them have sold out on Yes Style. So I think these two are the only two I'll really ever own, but I love these. These are so good. They're just amazing. They are really pretty. I think these are the only glittery tints I'll ever like. I don't know, something about them is just really pretty. So yes, still a favorite. M Infinite Lip Clouds and True Glosses. All right, so I have True Gloss and so True Gloss is in the white packaging, Infinite Lip Cloud is in the black. I have multiple shades of True Glosses at this point because I keep getting $5 promos. So then I'm just like, eh, whatever. So I have a lot of the glosses. Um, I used to really go hard for these, but I feel like I have since found Korean formulas that I like a little bit better. So I haven't used them in recent times. So I would say 
say not a favorite anymore. However, I think they're the closest you can get to an accessible Korean-esque formula, particularly the Infinite Lip Clouds, which also come in very pretty shades, might I add. Yeah, I could still wholeheartedly recommend them. The glosses are pigmented glosses, which is how I like my glosses, so I do really like them. But at the same time, I feel like I like the new Korean watery tints just a little bit more like the Roman Juicy ones or the Glasting Water ones are kind of, they just have a, they have a very different finish. From the true gloss basically they have different finishes and i tend to prefer the what's the trending korean finishes right now are what i kind of tend to prefer so i haven't really used them recently they've kind of just been usurped and you know you'll hear about that that's it that is it that's all that i wrote in my notebook i uh, hope if you guys watch this whole video till the end i admire you for tolerating my voice for that long because this is going to be a long video but yeah i hope you guys found that to be really interesting um i'm actually surprised at how many things i'm still using because i have the attention span of root fly so yeah i actually am very surprised i'm not surprised at all to see how so many of my preferences has changed <laughs> But at the same time, I still had some mainstays that I just keep holding on to, so that's how you know they're going steady. So the next video I'm going to film in my roundup series is going to be makeup that I used the most in 2021, so look forward to that. I know some people have been really anticipating that, and I'm very excited to share some of my newest finds for the second half of 2021. I'll be sharing that with you guys. Lots of new stuff. That's it. That's this video. Bye-bye.